Sometimes we have to be random. And it's good that Home Assistant supports a couple of ways on how you can do random stuff. We'll look at them in today's video. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Why would you want to do random stuff? And here I don't want to get this confused with, for example, present simulation, because there are other ways on how you can simulate that there is somebody at home. Here we're talking about random things. For example, one of my favorite things is random messages. Instead of each morning the system telling me good evening or good night, it has a couple of alternatives and randomly picks what it will say. That's a nice way of making the system look a bit smarter than it actually is. But that's not the only case. For example, if you have seen my last stream, you have maybe noticed in the corner on the stream there was an e-paper display and it was randomly displaying a couple of messages. That's also something that you can do in Home Assistant. Not just the e-paper, but also creating a random service calls. Let's start with built-in functionality. Home Assistant out of box supports two types of entities, binary sensor and sensors, and they can be created through the helpers. Let's go and do it right now. Let's go to Devices Services, Helpers, click on Create Helper, and here you can select Random. You now have option to create a binary sensor, a random binary sensor, or a random sensor. Let's start with the easy one, and that's a binary sensor. What this will do, it will create a binary sensor, and that sensor will update every 30 seconds. Each time it updates, it will create a random value. It can be on or off. But the good thing is that, for example, if you are testing your automations, you can use this random binary sensor to test and see if you have think of all of the scenarios. For example, let's create random binary sensor, give it a name, random binary sensor 2, because this system already has one random binary sensor. And then the excellent feature that we have here is option to select device class. If you select device class, you will be presented with a list of all of the supported device classes. So, for example, if you are creating automation that needs to track presence at home, you can here select presence. If you want to test your fire alarm automation, you can use smoke or, for example, moisture or light. This all depends on your scenario. For example, let's here select door sensor and this will create imaginary or fake door sensor. Click on submit, finish, and now we have a random binary sensor that represents the door. It can be either open or closed. As I said, this is really awesome to test your automations. What if you want to create something more complex? The only option left for you out of box is to create sensor. Sensor is nice because it allows you to play also with values and I have used it a couple of times. Let's click on create helper, random sensor. And now once again, we have to give it a name, random sensor two in my case, then you have to select the range of values. It can be from whatever value to whatever value. You have to be careful where you select this one. For example, if you want to create a timer for the light that turns off automatically in the range between 90 and 120 seconds, the minimum would be 90, maximum would be 120. Device class can then be anything you want to specify. For example, battery, carbon dioxide value, current, date, distance, and once again, because of that, this is also very useful if you want to test your automations. For example, if you are creating automation that would trigger alarm if the carbon monoxide value is above certain level, you can select carbon monoxide, input here 200, maximum 500, and then you select here the unit of measurement. All of the supported home assistant unit of measurements are already here in the list. And we now have a carbon monoxide sensor. Click finish. Every 30 seconds, this sensor will automatically select a random value in the range that we specified. Here are the previous two sensors that I've created. This one is binary sensor detecting presence away or home. And as you can see, it is very random. It is choosing the random value every 30 seconds. But as you can see, sometimes the same value can stay for minutes, two minutes, three minutes maybe. This one here is the random sensor choosing values between 10 and 60. They are pretty random. Let's use logbook for the binary sensor. And history graph will be used for the new random sensor. If we check here, we can see that the door was opened and closed, then opened and closed. 
and it is random. And same applies to the random sensor. The values, once again, are random in the range we specified. But what if you want to use templates or value template sensors? There is also a way how to do that. Let's go to Developer Tools, Templates. We'll clear this out and I'll paste here the code. In this case, we have created a value template that ranges between 1 and 51, and the value is random. Each time it updates, you can see that the value will change. This doesn't have to necessarily be every 30 seconds. This can be any time that this function or template is called. We have 4, 50, 32, 46, 27, 5. So each time the value template is called, the new random value is picked. And of course, you can have any number or any range here. For example, 1024. This is an excellent way to use this in, for example, template. But what if you want to create automations? As I said, I have automation that is picking a random service call. How can you do that? For that, <laughs> let's go to Visual Studio Code. This is the automation I create for my tag that is on my desk, so while I stream, it can change the display content. One will tell you to please give this video a like, and the next one will call you to subscribe. And by the way, if you still haven't liked this video, don't forget to give it a like and check that you are subscribed so you can get notified on the future video updates. So how does this one work? First part is standard part. I'm using trigger time pattern. This is triggered every one minute. Then I'm creating variables. Variable called E will be picked in the range between one and two. Of course, you can replace and specify here five, 10 or any random number, but I only need two numbers. So it is picking from the list that ranges between one and two, random value. Then in the action, I'm creating a choose. And choose, if you remember, was added when tag IDs were added in automations. It is checking the condition of the variable i. If i is equal one, then it will do this service call. And this one will display the subscribe me icon on the display. Or if the variable equals two, new sequence follows, where it draws the thumbs up and asks you to press like on the video. As you can see, this doesn't work if you are using UI, unfortunately. Trigger is triggered every minute of the hour. And then we have selection between two options. First one, test if template render values equal true, and that is i equals one. Then calls a service. The next one does the same thing. It checks if the i value is equal number two. Or how we've seen in the Visual Studio code, this is how the YAML code looks. But I also mentioned that there is a way for you to create uh, random text messages or text-to-speech messages, TTSs. And yes, this is how I have been pushing random messages to the speakers around my apartment for the last couple of years, three, four, or maybe even five years. Let's check that one out. So for example, let's look at this one. This is almost midnight speech. Because I was famous for dropping down and sleeping in front of the TV, I created one automation that is triggered each night at 2330, of course, if we are at home, and then it randomly says a message. And it also pushes this message, not just to the speakers, but also to the TV. And the messages are random. For that, I'm using script, but you can also insert that in your automations. We have service call, text-to-speech, Google Translate Say. Then we are pushing that message to this speaker. And for a message, we are using this code here. Each line contains one line of text that will be pushed randomly to speaker. So for example, I have a couple of lines. 23.30, get ready for bed. Midnight is closed, let's get ready for bed. Wind down, midnight is almost here. Get ready to go to bed, dimming lights. Hey, look at the time, it's late. Did you take your dog out? Then the system, each time it runs this script, selects a random value from this list. Or for example, at evening, and this one is triggered by sunset plus offset. When the trigger is triggered, it says one of the following messages. And you can use this part of the code inside your automations, and then it would randomly select one line of text and say it out loud, or send it to your mobile phone, or whatever notification service you are using. But this is, of course, not all. I've seen some awesome examples on the community forums, Facebook, Reddit, etc. For example, one person created automatic random scenes for Philips Hue. There are a lot of examples on why people are using random values, but now you have seen that there are a couple of options on how you can use them. If you are using something to simulate, to test your automation, scripts, etc., I would definitely say that the internal Home Assistant ones 
are the best ones. But if you want to expand, you can use the templates, you can use them inside your automations to either create variables or to be used to push a random text. I really do hope that you did enjoy this video and if you did, don't forget to give it a like and while you're already there, check that you are subscribed. If not, click on subscribe button so you don't miss the next video. And before I wrap up, I also want to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has liked, watched, subscribed or commented on my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, you can always send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.